Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what I want to do in this video is I want to clear up a little bit of confusion that I've seen lately. And that is, yes, port forwarding is NAT. So in previous videos, and I think I'll leave a link down below, we've talked about source NAT and destination NAT. So source NAT allows us to essentially hide computers and masquerade multiple computers to our WAN address on the outbound. Destination NAT allows us to punch holes in the firewall rules to let them come into the network, whether we're hosting you know, web servers, email servers, VPN, pick a, pick a whatever that you might host and you might expose to the outside world. Now, port forwarding actually is DNAT or, or destination NAT, but it simplifies the process for you, right? So if you've got a, a firewall and you're hosting a web server, a proxy, whatever it is, right? Instead of having to go through and create a bunch of rules, you can go to port forwarding and you can just say port forward, port 80 and port 443 to this inside address. And what it's doing is it is simplifying those firewall rules that you'd have to create, but it is still doing the destination NAT underneath the hood. The other thing that a lot of <clears throat> port forwarding does is it automatically enables uh, hairpin NAT or hairpinning, which is if we, let's say we're hosting willyhow.com on our internal server. When it goes out and it sees the IP address, which would then be attached to the WAN, it's going to go out of our firewall hairpin, come right around and come back in. Now, those rules are, they're not difficult once you've done them, but it's an extra set of rules that you have to create in your source and your destination NAT to make that hairpinning possible. Now, on larger networks, we don't recommend hairpin NAT. We recommend you run split DNS, where internally the clients would look up and they would get the internal IP address of your web server and go directly there. But for port forwarding is destination NAT and a little bit of source NAT. If you're using hairpinning, it's gonna mix some things together. And but it, it makes that process super simple so you don't even have to think about it. And a lot of the port forwarding now will allow us to also restrict where the traffic is coming from or from the outside for the, the source, which they didn't used to allow us to do that. The rules are getting better and things like that. It's doing all that magic under the hood automatically. And sometimes you can't even see it in a, a config. The operating system of your router just knows if port forwarding is, is turned on or what it shows you in the config. Uh, it knows how to handle that underneath the hood. But it is port forwarding without hairpin is straight up DNAT or destination NAT. I hope that cleared that up. If you've got any questions about that, let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, share, follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, you need to get your network looked over and get things tuned up. Uh, you need voice over IP, wireless security, all those things, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form that's on the front page, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Come on over to community.willyhow.com, sign up if you haven't already, and let's talk about port forwarding and NAT over on the community. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.